You know, when you look at something like that, and you think about it's going up 30, 35,000 feet, you begin to realize what men like Fowler and the Wright brothers did. Theirs was the hard part. Getting that first heavier-than-air machine off the ground was the impossible challenge. Once that barrier was broken, and that took centuries, the rest just sort of fell into place. There are many in Mobile today who remember their parents or grandparents telling them stories about a man named John Fowler and watching him and his strange machine fly. And it would have happened right here at Brookley Field. At the turn of the century, what is now Brookley Field was known as Monroe Park. It was the end of the trolley car line and a combination of fairground, racetrack, amusement park, and yacht club. It was here that John Fowler, a clock repairman by trade, developed and displayed what some believe was the first heavier-than-air machine to fly, several years before Kitty Hawk. It was here that Fowler worked, tinkered, organized, became frustrated and inspired to realize his dream of becoming the first man to leave the ground in a self-powered airplane. The reward for his pains were steady lines of mobilians so enamored of the idea of flight that they were willing to pay up to a quarter to view Fowler's strange contraptions, one of which was a glider that soared through the air on a tether. What cannot be denied is that Fowler's innovations had a significant influence on two bicycle shop owners from Ohio by the name of Wright, which their own genius put to good use at Kitty Hawk. The sight of remarkable combinations of wood, canvas, and metals traveling across the sky became less and less infrequent for the residents of Mobile. Air shows at Brookley Field became a favorite entertainment for young and old alike, and great crowds would gather to watch daredevil pilots seemingly defy the laws of physics. One of the very best of these daredevils was a man named O.E. Williams. By 1911, he had begun building his own plane, a modified Curtis. Within a few years, he moved his business and family to Mobile. As Williams Aeroplane Company continued to turn out bigger and better planes, Williams developed the first accurate airspeed indicator, the same design still in use today. In the years between the two great wars, Mobile became a regular stop for many of the greatest aviators of the day. Charles Lindbergh and Amelia Earhart were among the luminaries that landed at Brookley Field. And along with the normal air traffic of the day, the latest innovations of aviation always seemed to find their way to Mobile. Throughout the ensuing years of World War II, Brooklyn was a busy hub for servicing warplanes, B-17s, B-24s, and eventually B-29s all made their way to Brooklyn. And one of the nation's most secret devices, the Norden bombsight, was here calibrated and repaired in one of the most secure buildings of its day. Throughout the post-World War II era, Brookley Field continued to play an important role in aviation. Well known for its lengthy runways and easy access to water, Brookley was NASA's choice for landing the space shuttle atop its 747 ferry when it appeared at the 1984 World's Fair in New Orleans. From its ferry, the shuttle was transferred a short distance to an awaiting barge, which delivered it to its destination. It was here that Teledyne Continental Motors developed its engine for the Voyager aircraft, and in 1990, Brookley Field in Mobile became the home of one of the world's premier aircraft maintenance and repair companies, Mobile Aerospace Engineering. 